Okay, so the second part of the body of a proposal is the justification of your hypothesis and or research objective. So typically we dedicate um, one justification section for every hypothesis or objective that um, you have um, formulated um, for like, you know, within the proposal. So again, one section per hypothesis and per objective. Typically, yung typical na length that I have seen for, 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 for this section, um, it ranges from four to six paragraphs. And there are three main components. The first of which is a restatement of a more elaborate rest restatement of the hypothesis and the research objective. And that is typically followed by um, a citation of relevant literature information. So like I said, when it comes to framing these ideas and you know specific objectives and, and hypotheses, um, the way you write up the justification um, is really an indication of how of the quality of your review of, lit of, of literature. That's the reason why this is very important that you do your background research quite effectively, justify your hypo justify your objective and communicate the need, like why what you're doing is important. Okay, so the typical pieces of related literature that we typically provide here would be, you know, um, a restatement of conventional wisdom in the area. And then, you follow it up, you know, by highlighting the gaps in the field of in the field of studies, the challenges, or what are the unanswered questions that you're trying to answer with your proposed research idea. So it's very important that you do that. And then lastly, you actually state, you know, the studies or the, the studies or pieces of information from the literature that served as the basis for your hypothesis. So this is the context. Um, San ba nang galing yung research question nyo? What triggered for you to be interested um, to, uh, to answer those questions? And then typically, uh, we end uh, uh, a justification section with the importance of the proposed study. So again, this is more elaborate po because you know the importance of answering that hypothesis, the, the importance of achieving the goals of achieving like this specific objective you know, um, is this relevant to a particular area? Um, who will be benefiting from it? Uh, would that be cancer-stricken individuals? Would it, also, would it be specific to, you know, um, um, certain areas that need access to cheaper medicine? So you have to exemplify, or you, you actually have to, uh, you have to be able to enumerate um, um, these um, importance or like the impacts of, of answering or validating like this, hypo this specific hypothesis. So again, um, um, and there's a range of different importance that you can highlight. You can even include that, you know, by doing this, you will be able to establish a much better understanding as to how nanoparticles are working. So you're, you're also contributing to uh, the fundamental understanding of the science behind, um, say, um, nanomaterials as, um, as cancer treatment. So that's very important. So again, medyo... Kung mapapansin po ninyo, medyo mahirap kasi ito talagang i-digest. Again, pupunta po tayo sa specific example. So like I said, you write up a justification specific to an objective. So uh, there are two main objectives earlier that I um, identified. The first of which is on the uh, development of size uniform gold nanoparticles as potential high efficacy anti-cancer drug treatment. So the focus of this objective or hypothesis is, you know, um, is, you know to prove that size uniform gold nanoparticles um, will work as anti-cancer uh, uh, anti treatment drugs. So um, upon restating that, you know, you further um, reinforce the importance of answering these quest uh, this question by citing conventional knowledge. Ano na bang na-establish when it comes to nanoparticle, nanoparticles as um, anti-cancer drugs? You, and then you mentioned studies, um, you know, are, and, and information um, available from the open literature. Are, you know, are there findings for, that uh, suggest that a relationship between nanoparticle size and anti-cancer activity is, is, uh, is important? For, 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 for cancer treatment. So, you know, like you are trying to, um, again, provide them with pieces of information that motivated you to propose that, okay, size uniformity is a very important aspect of um, nano, nanomaterial drug development. Um, and then you, you have to highlight, and what are the challenges around 
the synthesis of size uniform nanoparticles. So by highlighting the challenges, you know, it, it's going to become clear to, to the reviewers or the fund to the funding agency that, oh, yung pinu propose niya is addressing a very important challenge when it comes to the synthesis of size uniform nanoparticles. And if they can develop size uniform particles, then we might be able to um, come up with an anti-cancer drug. And again, that is already transitioning into the importance of the proposed study. Again, correlation, size uniformity, higher efficacy. Um, um, so ito po yung, this is how you write up a justification. Like quite unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult for me to write up uh, an entire page with Two, with, with four to six paragraphs um, um, to show you guys as examples. But this is the framework. This is the framework of a justification section for, 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 for a specific um, um, hypothesis or, or program objective. And then again, yung second example po, yung second objective ng uh, gold nanoparticle case study natin is, in addition to making size uniform nanoparticles, we have to be able to um, produce them at a cost-effective manner. So when we say cost-effective, we have to make uh, we might have to make um, these materials cheap. So um, again, we start the justification by elaborating on the hypothesis or the objective. So we say the proposed study will adapt new synthetic methods and chemical precursors to produce cheap and uniform nano particle and you follow it up by stating what uh, what are the, what's the conventional wisdom when it comes to the synthesis of nanoparticles is it usually expensive how many uh, studies are there or how many protocols are there that uh, that that gen that produce uh, nano, uh, nanoparticles quite cheaply. So you have to be able to, to provide those information. And then you also have, you should also, you should also mention um, uh, or cite uh, studies that suggest that cheaper synthetic routes can be adapted. So it could be uh, a cheap uh, synthetic route for making, say, um, silver nanoparticles. And you, if you're quite sure that you can adapt the silver chemistry for making um, gold nanoparticles, um, you know, you should cite those. Again, highlight the challenges. What makes it difficult to make size-controlled gold nanoparticles? So by highlighting those challenges, you again, you're establishing the fact that ito yung problema. This is the problem that needs to be solved. And we think that by copying the method that was adapted for silver, you're coming up with a solution. And then again, once you have verified your hypothesis, then it's very easy then to justify the importance. So again, the importance of cheap um, anti-cancer drugs is that you can make it more accessible to everyone. You know, like, you know, they don't have to raise um, a huge sum of money to avail of, of treatments. If, if you design the, the framework of your justification in this manner, you, you, can, you can tell the story in a fairly cohesive manner. So, yun po. so justification is, is more like you're just telling them the story of how you came up with the idea and what made you confident that this is a good idea. So whenever you're writing a justification for a proposed uh, research idea or, or hypothesis, what could set your proposal apart would be um, if you could highlight some proof of concept work that proves in part that this idea is actually working, that this, this um, hypothesis is actually more likely verifiable. So, so if you're a high school um, teacher and over the years you say, for example, have been having your students to stay study the water quality um, uh, within a specific area, you know, um, you can use the results from previous years as a justification to any follow-up study um, for, for that topic. So, yun po, kapag meron kayong preliminary data that supports your idea, you should highlight that in the justification section. Because in addition to the review of literature, if you can provide them with actual experimental data that you gathered yourself, that typically... Um, helps increase the confidence in what you are proposing because you're not only uh, highlighting this, the studies or findings of other people, you have generated um, data to a certain extent to prove the point that you are proposing a very good idea that is worth funding and supporting. So 